feel better, Leah. I feel bad that you're not here. All right, so the quadratic formula is the first. Hey, Greg, why don't you go ahead and come up here? I think you're going to solve some issues. Quadratic formula utilizes our coefficient to x squared, our coefficient to x, and our constant value. Now, if there is nothing there, it's a 1. If there's no constant, it's a 0. But that's saying a, sure, a cannot be 0 because there has to be some kind of coefficient x squared. Otherwise, it's not a quadratic. Um, B should also not really be 0. It could be 0, but normally it won't be. Most of the time it has a value. Um, so, I mean, most of us have applied this before. Is this like really confusing to anyone? We should have seen this back in Math 1. We just plug in the values. If I say the discriminant, does anybody actually know what the discriminant is? Because it's in the quadratic formula. The discriminant is your b squared minus 4ac. So if you want to look for where it is in your quadratic, it's right there under the radical. So your discriminant is the value under the radical. Hey, guys, getting laptops. I'm still teaching. Thanks. So what the discriminant tells me is how many solutions I'm going to have. So this first page of your notes is a really good reference point when you're working on your homework to determine, am I going to have one solution, no solutions, or two solutions? Who can remember the situation where I have one solution? Obviously, when I have two, I pass through the x-axis going down and back up or up and back down. Seth? It just touches. It just touches, which makes it my vertex. So if my vertex is on the x-axis, that is when I will only have one solution. So when the discriminant Sorry, I did not highlight this. When the discriminant is greater than zero, when it's positive, I have two solutions. Higher the number is positive discriminant, you have two solutions. When my discriminant is equal to zero, I have one because that discriminant being zero means it just touches the axis. And when my discriminant, who can guess? Nobody, really? Is less than one, or sorry, less than zero, when it's negative, I have none. So here's how I always remembered it, and if I was you, I'd write it off to the side. Negative means none. If you have a negative discriminant, why though? Why does that make there be no solutions when the discriminant is involved in the quadratic formula. Because we know my quadratic is negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the discriminant is this part of it. Why? Ooh, that was a close one. I know, I think Jacob won by about a second. Wait, so if that part is negative, can't you, you can't have a negative square root inside of square root. This can't happen. You cannot square root a negative. So if we try to square root a negative, there's no answer. You will get an error, it cannot happen. Just a magic number. Uh, not even, well, yes, some, yeah. yes. But it does not actually exist. So no solutions when your discriminant is negative. Questions on any of that? It's all on the first page of notes. Now, I do have to apologize. When I formatted this into a PDF, my spacing got all funky. So like problem one should have been on the top of the back page. So you might want to copy over that um, quadratic to the top of the back page. Your x squared minus 8 equals 2x. I would put that at the top of your back page of notes. In this problem, you will use the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic I'm equation. Solve it out for you. Actually, I'm just going to pull it up. Ooh, hey. So we walk through, because I wanted you to have an example completely solved, how to plug it into the quadratic and how to solve it.
Now notice, when I have plus or minus here, I like to keep my options as long as I can until I have to split it to figure it out. So then I split to my positive if I do the plus option. And actually, I, it won't necessarily be positive. So then we make our two options, 2 plus 6 divided by 2. Well, that would be 4. 2 minus 6 divided by 2 would be negative 2. So my two answer values there are x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. So you want to write those down. That's why I put when you simplify, you see that the solutions are x equals 4 or x equals negative 2. Now, what was the first thing we had to do before I could apply the quadratic? This first step right here. That's a bad arrow. First step right here. What happened? Robert? We, <clears throat> excuse me. We made my polynomial equal to zero. So we grouped all values on one side and made the other side zero. So when we go to try this got it, that's also the first thing that we're going to do. So I want you guys to try your quadratic formula for the got it here. Start by making it set equal to zero, and then plug in your values, making sure you take any sign in front of a term with the term. The sign in front of the term goes with the term. The more times you write out the quadratic, do not start by plugging in numbers. Start by writing out what the quadratic is with the variables, then plug in the numbers. So x will equal negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The more times you write it out, the easier it will be to remember. Do you remember it? Here's an exemplary option challenge for you guys. Um, if anybody would like to actually like set that to a video or music or whatever, I know some of you digital wait, art people. Wait, if I did that, that. We, we did that, we get it. No, you still have to show that you've mastered the material, but that would take your mastery to an exemplary. Yeah. Greg thought he saw a quick way out of work. So I have to wait. So if I can't do this, I actually have to do like Kale, what's my B value here? Negative 4. Negative 4. Grant, what's my C value? Negative 21, because the sign in front of a term goes with the term. So the opposite of negative 4 would just be 4, plus or minus the radical now, it would benefit you to when you start write in the values before you simplify everything to watch out for mistakes. Negative 4 squared. And be careful when you start using your calculator. It will square a negative and tell you it's negative. So when I go to square B, I just don't even type. Like when B is a larger value, I don't even type the negative. I don't even give my calculator the chance to mess me up. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 21. A lot of times your calculator can actually mess you up. So is there an easy way for us to do the calculator? Right now? No. You could write your own program and then um, have it ask you what is A, what is B, what is C. I'm pretty sure Google just has a quadratic formula calculator that I just put in there. I mean, too bad you won't be able to use Google. Yeah, it's like, that's, that's I need to get a Google calculator. It's for free. 
So, as we work through this, I'm going to keep my 4, my 4, then work inside the radical. Negative 4 squared, 16, minus, now look at this before you start to move forward. What's it going to turn into? It's going to turn into addition. Because I have minus a negative. Those two will combine to give me addition. So it's actually going to be plus 84 all over 2. When I continue on, I now have x equal to 4 plus or minus what's in my radical now? 100 over 2. Now I can split it and say x could be 4 plus 10 over 2, or x could be 4 minus 10 over 2. 14 over 2 would be 7. Negative 6 over 2 would be negative 3. And I get that my answers are x equals negative 3 comma 7. I almost accidentally wrote or. It's not or, it's and. Both of them are solutions. It's not a choice, they both exist. Now we still don't necessarily know whether this is um, concave or convex, whether it's pointing up or pointing down, but we do know where those intercept points are. Now how, now you like raise an eyebrow, how do we know what way it actually points? Does anyone know? What? X squared being positive, this should look like a normal parabola. Should still be pointed upward. Questions on how we used our quadratic. Sometimes it works out really nice. Sometimes it doesn't work as nicely. You especially having the K homework tonight, they should work out nicer. Jacob? What do you mean by concave and convex? Does it all depends on the way you uh, we normally are orienting ourselves with x being horizontal, y being vertical, concave, convex. Because concave is like a bowl, caves in. So in the shot put, an athlete throws a heavy metal ball through the air. The arc of the ball can be modeled. Notice this arc would be going up and then down. It's got a negative coefficient to your a. That's how we can tell where x is the horizontal distance in meters from the athlete and y is the height in meters of the ball, how far from the athlete will the ball land? Well, one of the zeros is going to be where we start, right? I mean, that's, it makes sense. Close to where we start, at least. They are using his height being two meters, right? Because we're saying distance in meters. So he's a, well, if you think a shot put throws like at the shoulder, I mean, when you're in high school, you're six feet, a little over six feet tall, a lot of guys. Since we're talking about where the ball would hit the ground, we're talking about where the ball would hit the ground, what do you think? I don't know if this models it in here or not. You might show it to us and make it easier. I don't know if this is a picture or not. Yeah, there's that picture. What do you think, Jacob? You could set the height to zero, and then what you would get is the, um, that equation equals zero. When I make y equals zero, that would either be back here. Oh, you can't see that. That would either be back here, where y is equal to zero, or out here, where y is equal to zero. But the first thing I want to do is make my y be a zero. So step one would be make y zero because I'm looking for where it hits the ground. And based on this picture, I know that the ground is my zero elevation. And then you can just solve the, with the quadratic, and then you get both answers. We can solve it with the quadratic and get both answers. Well, I think that's the only answer. 
Obviously my negative answer, I can throw away because that does not make sense. It's not what I'm looking for. So when I go to plug this in, uh, they logged me off. Curses. All right, try to apply the quadratic. I'll get this pulled back up real fast. times you write the quadratic, the easier it is to remember. First thing we do, make our y value 0. We write down our quadratic and we start processing through. My b value is positive so be careful that when we plug it in, the first value is now going to be a negative 0.84. When we get down to our solutions, this radical of 1.0256 is not very nice. So that's when we are going to have to use our calculator to approximate that. And funny enough, some people, the common misconception I see they say, oh, we don't want the negative point, so forget about the one that does subtraction. That's not necessarily true, because the one that does subtraction does not mean your solution will be negative. That solution is actually your positive value. So the one that we can throw away is actually the one that did the addition. Grant? Um, could we just write that? You could just graph it and find the zero. I mean, yeah, was it fairly easy? Yeah, yeah what did you find for your zero? 23.16? Yeah, if we round to the hundredths, you're right. Yep. Make sure you understand how to use the quadratic, that you just know what plugs in where. But I agree, the graphing utility is probably easy. Yeah, we do have a graph Uh, You will have to at least show me that you can use the quadratic. So you'd have to do it at least once for me. Because that will almost guaranteed be on your end of the year, end of course exam. Questions? When you guys okay. use calculators on your I'm actually trying to get us some more, get Phoenix some more. By the way, a student of mine in seventh grade brought this up. Um, he asked, what is a hyperbole? He thought he was talking about math. Hyperboles are, you know, big exaggeratory statements. He was actually referencing a hyperbola. Anyone ever seen a hyperbola? Just because we're talking about things like that. This is a hyperbola. So it's real. It's really kind of crazy. It ends up looking sort of like an X. It's got two asymptotes that it gets closer and closer and closer to, but never touches. So we'll get into asymptotes and things like that later in the year. Um, Wait a minute. We're gonna actually do that. Uh, it depends on how much time we have. We might skip over our probability chapter and just finish up functions, dealing with piecewise functions and radical functions. Those are the only other functions we really have to talk. About. Step functions, like piecewise, was the steps. Um, but yeah, not quadratics are one of the harder things to understand. Try this. Um, you may use your graphing utility if you'd like. You may use your graphing utility if you would like. Yes. Batter strikes baseball. We can assume what about since our um, constant is 3.5. Do you think we're in feet or meters? Feet. I know the problem tells it to you, but if we're talking baseball and the batter strikes the ball at 3.5, if that was meters, <laughs> I don't know why he's trying to bat way up here. Maybe it was going to be a ball like we well, never never right had on the Maybe the strike zone is like right here. Yeah, well, yeah strike zone is like what, knees to chest or something like that? My buddy Dave, who teaches fourth grade umpires. There was one time in baseball, there was a pitcher who, like, he should have been in eighth grade. I'm in fifth grade playing baseball. This guy should have been in eighth grade. He came oh, really fast. Yeah, so I just made the box super small. I got down there. I got down, like, here. Yeah. Okay, whenever I face a batter hit, I'm going to 
If you use your quadratic formula, here's what it's going to look like. We always start by making our y equal 0, assuming we're looking for the zeros. We might be looking for a maximum or a minimum, though, in different situations. So be careful you pay attention to what you're actually looking for. We would get a um, positive and a negative solution. Now, we will not always have one positive, one negative. Sometimes both solutions are positive or both solutions are negative. Do not get spooked out if that happens. Sometimes a solution is zero with a positive or zero with a negative. You will have to change your window because you're using your graphing utility. I do not know if zoom fit will work. I would maybe try zooming out a couple times. If you just hit on window, it makes the X three numbers. So you can cheat since we have the solution up here. If you're just trying to practice your graphing utility, if you see that your solution is 144, your X range should probably go up to about 160 or 200 would be real safe. Would anyone like to see me graph it up on the TI-83? Yes, sir. Oh, I can do it. I'll just do it. So if we do I can't burn something down by using the calculator. Y equals negative. Hey, make sure that you're using negative and not minus. Some people had that issue. X squared plus 0.7x plus 3.5. Now my window is going to have to change. If I was you, I always just kind of leave my x men unless I really care about it. Nay, nah. I'll make it a little bit more. We'll go negative 20. Uh, 21, whatever. Uh, I'm going to go 200 actually and make this a scale of 20. My y scale, I don't really care about my y scale. So now we can see both zeros. I can use my second trace. When I'm looking for a zero, I always look what x comes up. So my x is near the vertex right now. Your x normally pops up near the vertex. So to do my left bound, I'm going to have to come way over left until my x is negative, because I see that it crosses negative. Drop my left bound. Drop my right bound. Step it close. Guess negative 4.83, exactly what they had here. That's not bad. Then I second trace again looking for my zero, and I go way to the right. Yeah, I would agree, but you can't. Left bound now is above. Some of you are still getting a little goofed up with that. Right bound will now be below, and my guess point somewhere close. And 144.83. Huh? Uh, you'll either get an error, or I mean, you can make your your range really big. Like, so if I make my left bound, and this is what I mean by just play with it, I can make my left bound way up here. I can make my right bound way down here. And I could make my guess somewhere in between. It still does a really good job at figuring out where it is. What if you put the guess outside the range? It will error. Your guess has to be within the range that you give them. Because it runs a computation for like, <coughs> how close am I get closer? How close am I get closer? How close? And it just keeps going until it finds it. It is a negative 4.8 or a positive 144.8. The only answer that makes sense is your positive. Make sure you typed it in correctly. Check that you have decimal values in the right place. Our first uh, coefficient is five thousandths. 0 0.005, so that would be one thing that I would caution you about. Questions? Apparently my ink doesn't want to clear if I'm sitting at my desk. If it's all because you put in what you got. It knows, man. Uh -huh. Probably watching. Oh wait, maybe you turned off that light. In this problem, you will choose an so, 3x squared minus 9. How do you think we could solve this? Anybody? So you would move the 9 to the other 
Okay. So what's what's the one word that you can use to describe it? Algebra. Algebra. All we needed algebra is the manipulation of numbers to solve a problem. So we just move the nine. We can get three x squared equals nine now. I can divide by three on both sides and get x squared equals three. So my solution will be the radical of three, but I'll have positive or negative. Always make sure that when you're talking about radicals, you're gonna have two solutions. Algebra would be quite appropriate there. I probably, just so I don't have to deal with digits, am gonna jump over to your notes, show these here. Okay, Pearson, whatever, the, the video playing. So that's what do you think, what's appropriate for B? Graphing. Graphing? Yeah. There's, an, there's an easier way. If you think about the factors of 30, you'd factor it because five and six are pretty easy. I see one's negative and my center term's negative. So if I do x minus six, x plus five, that would work, which then, remember, what are my solutions? Positive six and negative five. So their factoring's easy, because think about the factors of 30. C, I have six x squared plus 13 x minus 17. To graph it, or we could use quadratic formula. I'm definitely graphing. You definitely what? D, are you saying E? The last one? So let's see what they said. I am curious what methods they told us to. This was algebra. Here they factor. So I'm curious what they do for this one. Yeah, use a quadratic formula or graphing. Exactly what we said. Probably same thing for D. Uh, now we could complete the square because it's not that hard. Negative 5, half that, 2.5, square it. It's not wonderful though, so if you've got your graphing utility, I would probably just again use that. This one, crazy big. I really would not try to use the quadratic here. You could, but the problem is the numbers are so large. Yeah, your b squared is going to be giant. So you just have big numbers to work with. I would probably again choose to graph if I could. Yeah. Um You want to do second and the plus sign. Second and the plus sign it takes you to the memory menu and then you want to go to 7 which is reset. And then if you want a hard reset, do all RAM. And that'll reset everything in the calculator. Back to defaults. Do you have to remember what was here the last time? Do you have chicken farm? I don't know, do you? What about this one? No, you wouldn't. I can factor this quicker than you can graph it. Think about the factors of 12. Four and three, but that doesn't help us with eight. Six and two. So if I do x minus six and x minus two, that's it. That was easy. So my x's are six and two. I really don't think you did. I graphed it while you were talking about how you were going to Should what? <laughs> well, I have one of my, have you seen this yet? One of my students, because my bad jokes, gave me a laugh button. So when you guys don't laugh, I can have laughter. That sounds so almond. Well, there's other ones. It sounds like a big Before a what she gets stabbed in a movie? Know what that like. At least she said in a movie and not in real life. You don't know that. In this problem, right, 
you will use the discriminant to determine the number of real number solutions of a quadratic equation. How many real number solutions does the equation 2 times x squared minus 3 times x equals negative 5 have? B squared minus 4ac, it uses all a, b, and c. So when I look at this, I first need to set it in the correct form. I need to set this equal to 0. So this becomes 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0. Did I solve this on your notes? Am I doing extra work? No, I did not. Yay. So, start with the original equation. We write the equation in standard. This is standard form. By the way, when we write it equal to 0, when we have the quadratic polynomial, that's our standard form. Then, we want to look at your b squared. So, negative 3 squared. I'm just going to plug in everything as it is. Negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5. Well, this will be 9 minus, well, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 5, 40. 9 minus 40 gives me an answer of negative 31. Because remember, if they're different signs, you just find the difference, figure out which one makes it positive or negative. So if my discriminant is negative, what's that tell me? There are no solutions. So you can either write no solutions or the empty set tells us that there are no solutions possible. So try the got it. Figure out how many solutions there would be based on the discriminant of the got it. And then we will start your homework. Try the got it. How many solutions? Evaluate your b squared minus 4ac. I'm going to post the uh, homework assignments on Schoology so you can download it and print it if you would like. In case Emily decides to watch her homework again. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was tired. How did they do that? It, no, it kind of makes sense. Like, oh, I need to wash off this sock, but it's paper. So, we're yeah, at, we were doing our homework like on clay tablets. Well, if you had fired the clay first, oh, true. that would be different. How about you go fire? Well, you fire you'd be like, I was the water wouldn't matter. Yeah, the water wouldn't matter. Or you could have just poured it in. Mr. Hudson, if you I gave us my pencil, I did two things. All right, hold up real quick before we, uh, you guys still have like five minutes to work on your homework. How many, how many solutions for your got it? Two. two. You get a positive answer. There are two real number solutions. Twenty-one. Wait, Mr. Hudson, if you gave us like tablets to work with.